Originally the company's cable address, Nilfisk was later also to become the company's brand name, hence Nilfisk Vacuum Cleaner and so on. As mentioned, the company continued to be called Fisk & Nielsen right up until 1989 when it was acquired by NKT and renamed Nilfisk. But the company's vacuum cleaners were given the name Nilfisk from the appearance of the very first model in 1910. The historical development of the Nilfisk domestic vacuum cleaner can be seen in the large display case along the wall. The five very shiny artefacts standing on the podium, some of which resemble robots, are in fact all domestic vacuum cleaners, despite the fact that they differ considerably. The largest weighs 26 kilos when empty, so it's quite a heavy weight. The early vacuum cleaners also had no wheels. Wheels were an irrelevance because those who could afford to buy vacuum cleaners had people to carry them around. Fisker and Nielsen experienced very rapid expansion. In just a few years, the company had dealerships in 21 countries. It was also fortunate enough to have some extremely able marketing people on its staff. We can see an example of this if we look at the two small vacuum cleaners standing next to the man in work clothing, and then at the red advertisement on one of the lecterns. The red advertisement dates from 1922, when Tutankhamun's tomb was discovered. This discovery was a truly fantastic event. Someone at Nilfisk then had a bright idea of exploiting the close resemblance between Tutankhamun's sarcophagus and the company's vacuum cleaner. He duly did so, and probably without asking anyone. He hit on the following advertisement text. If Tutankhamun had had a Nilfisk vacuum cleaner, he would never have died of tuberculosis because Nilfisk removes all bacteria containing dust. This was typical Fisker and Nielsen. Doctors and professors were commissioned to write about the blessings of good hygiene, photos of dust mites were magnified, and the company stressed the great importance of house cleaning. All of these things had a single objective, to sell vacuum cleaners. And this objective was fully realized. As an example, next to the red advertisement on the lectern, we have a letter to the company dating from 1939. The letter is written by the Danish Prime Minister of the day, Torvald Stowning. He writes, I wish to buy one of your new vacuum cleaners, but in part exchange for my existing one. Kindly do the necessary. And the company did. Now you might think they complied with this request because it came from the Prime Minister. Not so. It was normal practice. The Prime Minister got his new vacuum cleaner in part exchange simply because it was the custom. When a new vacuum was launched and people wished to upgrade from their existing model, the latter would be included in the transaction. The old vacuum was then given a polish, new carbon brushes were installed in the motor, and the cleaner was sold at a reduced price. I personally know many people who started their careers as housewives with a second-hand vacuum cleaner because the new one was expensive. In the same display case, behind Stowning's letter and the red advertisement, we find numerous examples of vacuum accessories. It's interesting to note that these accessories included a paint spray and a hair dryer. The reason being that with vacuums, it was possible to connect the hose to the exhaust something that could be extremely useful. For example, it was handy for unblocking the hose if it became clogged with dog hair or Lego bricks. But as I say, the exhaust could also be useful for other purposes, namely to provide air for a paint spray and hair dryer. These were luxury refinements, but they sold well and were doubtless popular as Christmas or birthday presents. I have tried the hair dryer for myself and it's excellent because the filters are so effective that you don't get dirty hair but there's no removing the smell from an old vacuum cleaner hose. 